May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. January 12, 2024 Friday of the First Week in Ordinary Time A reading from the first book of Samuel Therefore, all those greater by birth of Israel, having gathered together, went to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you are elderly, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Appoint for us a king, so that he may judge us, just as all the nations have. And the word was displeasing in the eyes of Samuel, for they had said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they are saying to you. For they have not rejected you, but me, lest I reign over them. And so Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people, who had petitioned a king from him. And he said, This will be the right of the king who will have authority over you, he will take your sons, and place them in his chariots. And he will make them his horsemen and his runners before his four-horse chariots. And he will appoint them to be his tribunes and centurions, and the plowmen of his fields, and the harvesters of the grain, and the makers of his weapons and chariots. Likewise, your daughters he will take for himself as makers of ointments, and as cooks and bakers. Also he will take your fields and your vineyards and your best olive groves, and he will give them to his servants. Moreover, he will take one-tenth of your grain and of the results of your vineyards, so that he may give these to his eunuchs and servants. Then, too, he will take your servants and handmaids and your best young men and your donkeys, and he will set them to his work. Also, he will take a tenth of your flocks, and you will be his servants. And you will cry out, in that day, from the face of the king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. And the Lord will not heed you, in that day. For you requested a king for yourselves. But the people were not willing to listen to the voice of Samuel. Instead, they said, by no means. For there shall be a king over us, and we shall be just like all the Gentiles. And our king will judge us, and he will go out before us, and he will fight our wars for us. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he spoke them to the ears of the Lord. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice, and appoint a king over them. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed is the people that knows jubilation. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. And in your name they shall rejoice all the day, and in your justice they shall be exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your good pleasure shall our horn be exalted. For our protection is of the Lord, and of our King the Holy One of Israel. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And after some days, he again entered into Capernaum. And it was heard that he was in the house. And so many gathered that there was no room left, not even at the door. And he spoke the word to them. And they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was being carried by four men. And when they were not able to present him to him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And opening it, they lowered down the stretcher on which the paralytic was lying. Then, when Jesus had seen their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. But some of the scribes were sitting in that place and thinking in their hearts, 
Why is this man speaking in this way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus, realizing in his spirit that they were thinking this within themselves, said to them, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up, take up your stretcher, and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise up, take up your stretcher, and go into your house. And immediately he got up, and lifting up his stretcher, he went away in the sight of them all, so that they all wondered. And they honored God, by saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we offer meaningful support and hope to those struggling with overwhelming challenges or sins in their lives? They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Mark 2 verses 3 to 4 This paralytic is a symbol of certain people in our lives, who seem to be incapable of turning to our Lord by their own effort. It's clear that the paralytic wanted healing, but he was unable to come to our Lord by his own effort. Therefore, the friends of this paralytic carried him to Jesus, opened the roof, since there was such a large crowd and lowered the man down before Jesus. The paralysis of this man is a symbol of a certain type of sin. It's a sin for which someone desires forgiveness, but is incapable of turning to our Lord by their own effort. For example, a serious addiction is something that can so dominate a person's life, that they cannot overcome this addiction by their own effort. They need the help of others, to even be able to turn to our Lord for help. We, each must see ourselves as the friends of this paralytic. Too often when we see someone who is trapped in a life of sin, we simply judge them and turn away from them. But one of the greatest acts of charity we can offer another is to help provide them with the means they need to overcome their sin. This can be done by our counsel, our unwavering compassion, a listening ear and by any act of fidelity to that person during their time of need and despair. How do you treat people who are caught in the cycle of manifest sin? Do you roll your eyes at them and turn away? Or do you firmly determine to be there for them, to give them hope and to assist them when they have little or no hope in life to overcome their sin? One of the greatest gifts you can give to another is the gift of hope by being there for them to help them turn fully to our Lord. Reflect today upon a person you know who seems to be not only caught in the cycle of sin, but has also lost hope to overcome that sin. Prayerfully surrender yourself over to our Lord and commit yourself to the charitable act of doing anything and everything you can, so as to help them fully turn to our divine Lord. Let us pray. My precious Jesus, fill my heart with charity toward those who need you the most, but seem incapable of overcoming the sin in their lives that keep them from you. May my unwavering commitment to them be an act of charity that gives them the hope they need to surrender their life to you. Use me, dear Lord. My life is in your hands. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.